Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from computergaga.com. This tutorial will look at how to write a dynamic sum formula. It's a question that we get asked a lot when training is that people want to perform a function like a sum to a dynamic range, a range that is going to increase or decrease over time. You know, the range is different, we don't want to have to manually be editing that formula to update the reference. We want the formula to pick it up itself to automatically detect a change in height uh, or width. So what we would like to do is add up column G. This list of orders, it does change over time. It does get bigger. We want our formula to pick these up itself. And the formula is going in cell J4, Juliet 4. So we will write equals. Tell you what, let me come out of that a second and I'm just going to zoom that in a bit. That's very small. Uh, yes, we will write equals sum open in bracket. And instead of selecting a range like you normally would, a static range, we're going to put the offset function in there. A brilliant function that will return a reference. And it gives us the ability of creating a dynamic nature to some of our stuff, uh, such as the pivot table to, to, to named ranges. So we're going to add to this offset, and embed it within our sum here. And offset will ask us for five pieces of information. The last two we can see are optional, height and width, but they are two of the key ones for us. First thing we want to know is a starting reference. We're going to give it cell G2, and I'm going to press my F4 key to fix that range. G2 is not going to move, it'll always start from G2, fix that. Then put a comma, I see how many rows and how many columns would you like to move? I don't want to move anywhere. I'm going to start from G2, but then pick up the height of the range which is changing. So I'm going to put a zero, a comma, another zero, followed by a comma. So do not move any rows or any columns. Stay in G2 as you do this. Then ask you what is the height of the range. Now that is the winning question. It starts from G2, but where does it end? I'm going to detect this with a count A function. Let me move down and tab that. Count A. And I'm going to count how many cells are in column G. And that should return 800 to start with. So it will know it's G2 to G800. But as I add more rows, it will count them and it will know the end point. Important I'm doing count A here because it will include the header in that. Otherwise, you'll be one short because it will only count numbers if you do a normal count. So I'll close in bracket, comma. What is the width of your range? I'm going to put one. It's always one column wide. You know, you can make that side of things dynamic with a count A as well, but for our sum, it's just one column wide, G2 to G, wherever it falls. Closing bracket will close your offset. I can see it's bringing back to my sum function. I'm going to put another closing bracket to close my sum. So my offset function is effectively embedded within the sum. Uh, giving it a dynamic nature rather than just adding a static G2 to G800. Press enter, that will give us our total. And more importantly now, let's make a note of that. 1,228,000, 228,000. We shoot to the bottom, control down arrow. Let's add a new row, 100,000. What an order. And then if I shoot back up to the top, it is 1,328,000. Let's control Z to undo. Remember that was previously 228,000. So it's definitely working. Our dynamic range is picking up new entries to it. Essential skill of Excel. Absolutely brilliant stuff. The offset is truly amazing. And it's given us the ability to create a a dynamic sum for me here. Thank you for watching. Please check out some of our other uh, tips and tricks at computergaga.com.